Hey everybody, this is Brian with BearCards34. Today I'm coming back with another TTM Blast from the Past video. This is where I show some of the autographs that I had returned to me as a kid when I would do TTMs back in the day. I got the addresses for the teams from the very first ever Beckett football card magazine. And my brother and I just wrote lots and lots of letters and just crossed our fingers as to what would be returned. So this first one here, this is the... Uh, 1989 Buffalo Bills uh, team picture, and this is autographed by running back Larry Kinnenbrew. Uh, so Larry Kinnenbrew was a very talented running back, actually. In 1983, he was a sixth-round draft pick by the Cincinnati Bengals. He played there for five seasons, and then his final two years were with the Buffalo Bills, and that included this 1989 season. Uh, his rookie card is 1985 tops i'll go ahead and show that this is his rookie card right here and they actually did feature him as well on the team card this is ken anderson handing off to him but advancing the ball downfield uh, so those are his first two cards that he made an appearance in and then his final card with the cincinnati bengals was in this 1988 product in fact uh, that was his uh, last year with them he was quite a successful running back, all things considered. You know, he split time with James Brooks in Cincinnati most of that time. And when he went to the Buffalo Bills, obviously he was the backup to Thurman Thomas. Uh, but uh, he ran for over 3,000 yards. He was really known as a, a scoring running back. He had 44 touchdowns, and he was a, a big bruising running back, um, which, you know, that word big was actually something that kind of caused some issues in Cincinnati. He and Sam Weish did not get along. Uh, Sam Weish was the head coach of the Bengals, and uh, Sam Weish had referred to him as fat, which didn't go down well with Larry Kinnebrew. And uh, even though Larry was uh, showing a lot of success, in fact, he had, uh, he was in the top 10 in the NFL for rushing touchdowns four straight years, 85, 86, 87, and... Uh, or no, 84, 85, 86, and 87. And uh, so he had 34 touchdowns over four years. The only other running back to place in the top 10 in touchdowns all four of those years was Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson. Uh, but with that weight issue and some uh, negative feelings between coach and player, uh, what was interesting was in Larry Kinnebrew's last start for the Bengals, he ran for over 100 yards and scored a touchdown. And then he uh, had strep throat after that uh, that next week, and he missed some practice. And Weish and the Bengals fined Larry Kinnebrew for missing practice, and he only got one carry the next week. And after that, he was basically done. So he didn't want to play for Cincinnati. He held out and did not play during the 1988 season. And then he signed a contract with the Bills. And there's actually a, a YouTube video uh, there's a channel called Official Jaguar Gator 9, and he does some pretty interesting stories about the NFL, sometimes stories that others may not have heard of. And he highlights what he calls, uh, you know, uh, one of the best revenge games. And it was actually, you know, Larry Kinnebrew with the Bills was able to. And here's a, here's a card of Larry uh, with the Bills. This is for the 1990 tops right here. And uh, so he uh, had one game in the regular season against the Bengals, and he ran for almost 70 yards with four and a half yards per carry. Uh, and I know that that was, and they won the game, and I know that was something that really meant a lot to him. Uh, EJ Jr., who uh, was a, uh, you know, at one time a Pro Bowl linebacker in the NFL, he once uh, described Larry Kinnenbrew as an earth-moving vehicle. Uh, after a game, he had had the quote of, how does one stop an earth-moving vehicle? So this was a bi big, boot bruising running back, uh, but I was very happy to get this autograph back. Uh, so he autographed it with his jersey number, best wishes, and it's a really cool team card, you know, team picture of the, the Buffalo Bills right as they were getting to their, you know, great span of, of success. And, you know, this is AFC East champions, then they would go on to become the AFC champions for four years in a row with four straight Super Bowl appearances. Some really good Hall of Famers on the team. Uh, you got Jim Kelly. You've even got Frank Reich, who's a coach these days. Bruce Smith, Thurman Thomas, a bunch of other really talented, great players. Andre Reid. 
And so anyway, yeah, it's nice to, to have that autograph in my collection for sure. Okay, next up I've got this autograph from Steve Bono. Uh, he was the 49ers' third string quarterback behind two of the all-time greats, Joe Montana and Steve Young, for many years. Uh, he was a, a really good quarterback in his own right. And if Steve Bono is your third QB, that just lets you know how good your QB roster is. So he sent me back this, uh, and I always loved it when the players would send these photos um, autographed. So he you know, initial, uh, addressed it to me, to Brian, all the best, Steve Bono. And uh, he was actually, he started with the Vikings back in 1985. He was a late round draft pick, I think sixth round. And uh, he didn't have his first start until a couple of years later when he played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But in 89, he signed with the 49ers as a backup to Montana and Young. But, you know, he actually started in 91 because Montana was out. Steve Young got hurt for a little while. He started six games and he went five and one and finished the season fourth in passer rating uh, with Steve Young being number one that year. So in 94, he was traded to Kansas City to back up who else but Joe Montana again. Uh, but then when Montana retired, he became the starting quarterback in 1995. You know, so that was, you know, 11 years into his career. But he had a great season. Uh, the the uh, Chiefs went 13-3. and three. He made a Pro Bowl. Uh, to finish out his career, he moved around. His final three years, he was a backup with, uh, I think, the Packers, and then the Rams and the Panthers. Uh, but he was a, a talented quarterback for sure, and I, I always really appreciated having this autograph in my collection. All right, next up we have Todd Marinovich. Uh, so he was a first-round draft pick by the Raiders back in 1991. He was the second quarterback drafted. Um, that was the draft that had Brett Favre, but he came much later, uh, well, somewhat later anyway. There were some concerns when he was drafted. He had been suspended in college for skipping classes and there was a, a the sun bowl game where on national tv he yelled at his coach so there were some you know there were some some uh, issues there and then I, I think he was also he had a drug arrest so there were some concerns in college and he ended up leaving early for the draft uh but the, the raiders decided to give him a chance he definitely had talent and during his first game as a starter, it was the, the last week of the season, Jay Schrader was injured. He did really well. Um, he, uh, he did well enough, in fact, that they started him the next week in the playoffs versus the Chiefs. But unfortunately, he had a really rough game through four interceptions. Uh, they lost the game 10-6, to and, and afterwards he smashed a locker room mirror with his helmet uh, just in frustration. Uh, he really had an up and down next season, um, and then unfortunately, substance abuse really derailed his career. Um, in 1993, he was suspended for the season, and he never played in the NFL again. So during his career, he only threw eight touchdowns with nine interceptions. Um, he did play a little bit in the Re Arena League a few years later. There's an ESPN documentary called The Marinovich Project that's really interesting. And you know, I you know I I really have a lot of sympathy and empathy for. You know, people who struggle with addiction, I know that's a, you know, a really challenging thing. Who knows what his career could have been. Uh, I know that since then he's, he's had some on and off, you know, issues. But, you know, this is a, you know, a guy who was, he was really well known even prior to college. You know, his, his father had been in the spotlight with, you know, the way Marinovich was being raised and, and really, you know, trying to produce a great football player. Um, so I'm sure he had a lot of pressure on him, but, uh, you know, it was really nice to get that autograph. I was really excited to, to have that auto. Um, you know, he was one of those big quarterbacks you were searching for back in 91 and 92. And I, uh, really appreciate the autograph. So there you go. Todd Marinovich. Okay. So this next one came back to me in, uh, the fall of 1993. So this right here, this is Anthony Smith. He is a Raider. Let me get that light up a little more. Okay. So he is a uh, uh, he was a Raider. First round draft pick back in 1990. Um, he was a very talented running back. Or running back. Defensive end. And uh, what he sent back to me was this letter. So I always loved getting letters. So this one right here has the Los Angeles Raiders stationery. It's dated. Uh, dear Brian, it's always nice to get encouraging letters from fans, and yours was very special. 
This season is starting now, and we will be really have we will really have a tough schedule of practice. Keep cheering us on, and good luck with your football. But don't slack off in school. That's your most important job. Maintain Anthony W. Smith. So uh, that right there, yeah, very nice letter. I was very happy to have that. Um, and he was he was a really good player. Uh, just to kind of you know highlight some of his accomplishments in the NFL. Along with being the 11th pick of the draft back in 1990, he played eight seasons. He was once married to the singer and actress Vanity, uh, for those of you from back in the day who may remember her. Now, Anthony Smith's best season, uh, that would have been in 1992, where he had 13 quarterback sacks. And he had three straight years with double-digit sacks. In 91, he had 10.5. In 93, he had 12.5. But, you know, after his career... Yeah, he really seemed to be getting into a lot of trouble. In 2003, he was charged with fire, a firebomb in California in a furniture store. He was having a dispute with the owner. And then in 2011, he was charged with murder for a 2008 murder. And then while he was awaiting trial for that, he was charged with three more murders. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, his career, you know, his, his life after his NFL career, was not good to say the least. He's currently sentenced to three consecutive life sentences in prison without parole. So again, unfortunately, this is just an example of a really talented player who uh, you know took the wrong path. Unfortunately, I was really happy to get that auto back in the day. Um, you know when he was a player because he was really good. Uh, but you know you look back on it now and it's just kind of crazy to think that that that's how things ended up because he gave some really good advice right you know um don't slack off in school that's the most important job I mean, it's good advice uh but yeah sometimes life goes a different way for us unfortunately all right next up i got this uh, autographed card of gary anderson uh he was a very talented running back uh whoa sorry about that uh, but he's a three-time 1,000-yard rusher. Two of those years were in the USFL with Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay Bandits. And then he also had a great year in 88 with San Diego, the Chargers, where he ran for over 1,000 yards. Uh, he also played one year uh, for the Memphis Mad Dogs in the CFL. Memphis was kind of a U.S. expansion team that he played for to kind of round out his career. But anyway, after the 88 season that he did had such a good year on, he sat out the entire season in a contract dispute. And uh, then in 1990, he signed with Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So he returned, you know, he played for the Tampa Bay Bandits, and then he went back, you know, near the end of his career to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he's just a very talented player. And, uh, yeah, so I was very happy to get that auto. Uh, it's kind of a darker card, but uh, hopefully that auto can kind of sh- show up on there. But, uh, yeah, good, good running back for sure. Okay, next up, I've got Ricky Irvins. Uh, so this right here, I, I would sometimes make little uh, little uh, collages for some of my non-card autographs. So this is one I had made for him back in the day. But I loved getting this auto. Um, and not, it shows up really well in person. I'm, I'm not sure how well that shows up on here. But what he had done is he, he cut out um, a picture of him from a newspaper where he, this is him scoring the winning touchdown for USC in the 1990 Rose Bowl. And he even dated it right there uh, for this one, 6 To Brian, stay positive with the Lord. God bless Ricky Irvins, number 34, which is what he was in college. And, uh, you know, he uh, really made a fan out of me after re- getting this returned. I just thought that was so thoughtful that he'd send, you know, take the time to send a, a you know, a newspaper clipping like that. So he was a third-round pick by the Redskins in 91, and uh, he won the Rose Bowl MVP with that that game there. And uh, his rookie year was definitely his best season. He ran for almost 700 yards and helped the team to the Super Bowl 26. Uh, He was the game's leading rusher in the Super Bowl as well with 72 yards. And uh, in in, uh, 1991, he was also part of the all-rookie team. He did play three more years with the Redskins and then a final year with the 49ers. And then that kind of wrapped it up for him. Uh, but I, I always appreciated that he did that, and I was, I was a big fan of his after getting that back in the mail. And I actually, you know, purchased this one. This is one of those Pro-Line where they have the uh, cert, uh, the authenticity right here. Just to get another auto of him, 
uh, because it was such a good deal on eBay a little while back. So yeah, anyway, very happy to have uh, that auto as well. So I've got one more for us. Okay, so this last one here is one of my all-time favorite TTMs that I was ever given by a, by a player. And that is Hall of Famer Dermonte Dawson. So he was a second-round pick out of Kentucky, and he played all 13 years of his career with the Steelers. During his rookie season, he, he played guard alongside Hall of Fame center Mike Webster. And then the next year when Webster was gone, he moved into center and then, yeah, had a Hall of Fame career of his own. Uh, he was nicknamed Dirt for the way he would uh, slam players into the, into the mud, into the ground when, when he was blocking. And the funny thing is, you know, just to kind of show his men, you know, his presence on the field, they gave him that nickname of dirt. And look at this, you see blood and mud all over his leg. He was a tough guy. However, off the field, uh, people called him Ned Flanders. So if you're familiar with, uh, if you're familiar with the Simpsons, you'll know that character. So he was Ned Flanders off the field just because he was such a nice, friendly guy, very positive guy, very cheery. And, uh, you know, great player, seven straight Pro Bowls, six-time All-Pro, first-team center for the 90s All-Decade team, and in 2012 went to the Hall of Fame. Uh, Bill Belichick once said he was one of the best players that he's ever played against at that position. And, you know, that, that's pretty that, – that's saying a lot, you know, because he was, you know, a coach with the Giants, with Lawrence Taylor. He was a defensive coordinator. Uh, he You know, and, and uh, it's always nice when – you know, some of the great coaches acknowledge you like that. So these three cards, I was very thrilled to get back from him autographed. But what made it even better, and I, I actually still have the original envelope that this was mailed back to me. So this came in in November of 1991. And uh, uh, you can actually see right here, there it is, Dermonte Dawson and then the Stadium Circle in uh, Pittsburgh. Very cool to, to, to still have that. And then, <clears throat> right here, um, is a note uh, that he, he wrote to me. Uh, Dear Brian, Brian, how are you? I'm writing back to thank you for your letter. I'm glad that you like the Steelers and myself so much. The season so far has not been the way I planned it. Things don't seem to be clicking this year for our team. When I attended the University of Kentucky, <clears throat> I played center guard, and then they moved me to defensive tackle. I didn't like it at all when my coaches made that change without asking me first. Sometimes what you think is best may not always be best for the team. Football is such a team game that you can't think of yourself. It must be what's good for the team and what it's going to take to get the job done. I hope that you and your team are doing well this year. Stay healthy and in good shape at all times. Uh, this cuts down on injuries and helps prolong playing careers. Well, it's time for me to go to bed. Take care of yourself and may God bless you and your family. Sincerely yours, Dermonte Dawson, number 63. And a little note here, P.S. Stay in school and learn as much as you can. I've enclosed a football card also. Take care of yourself and thanks for writing. So I got to tell you, that, that, like I said, this is one of my all-time favorites. It was a very thoughtful letter, a personal script at the end. And he threw in three cards autographed to me. I, di I didn't send these to him. You know, he had these. He signed these for me and, and, and put those in as well. So again, this is an example of a player who excelled at the sport and was extremely successful but still took time to really write these thoughtful letters. Uh, and I just really, really appreciate that. So as a fellow lineman myself, you know, when I was younger, uh, I always, you know, looked for, for good, you know, role models and examples. And I played center for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, I just really, really looked up to him, really admired this guy and was so happy when he was elected into the hall of fame and so th this is definitely one of my more uh most memorable uh ttms that i've ever had so anyway that's it for today i hope you guys enjoyed that video i'll definitely be back with more blasts from the past in the future feel free to like and subscribe and as always go bears